is Tina, Tina Stitches. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel on floss tube on YouTube that we call floss tube, a channel all about cross stitch. Um, now, if you're interested in cross stitch, just type floss tube into the search bar and you'll get a ton of people like me doing these videos. We're going to show you our works in progress, new starts, haul, anything to do with cross stitch. Um, Welcome to anybody who's new and thank you for coming back if you are a returning subscriber. Today is Sunday, September 18th and it is early afternoon, almost three o'clock. Um, quite often around early afternoon people will hear trains in my video so don't be surprised if you hear a train in about 15 minutes. I don't, it doesn't, uh, it's not it doesn't affect me, I just don't notice it anymore. It's background noise. It's like, you know, living by a highway. Um, you get used to it, it doesn't faze me. So, I have one dog in here with me. She's probably going to be very quiet. She usually is. That's my little Khaleesi. And uh, Gidget, the yappy louder one, is currently either downstairs or outside. She's with her daddy. I'm not worried about her. So, what have I been doing for the last week? I have been stitching on whatever ABC Ingo tells me to stitch on. Yeah. There's a few things that I did not stitch on yet, or I have stitched on, but I didn't take a before picture. And so I have to redo it. But it's not a problem because the goal on this challenge, which is run by Carolyn Zook and Robin Hall, on Facebook. It's the monthly magazine challenge group and the challenge is a hundred stitches or an hour of stitching. So it doesn't take a lot of time. It's just for fun. Work on whatever you want to work on. You make your you you make your board, you make your projects. It's not quite the same as the ones that they do in January, which is Bringo and that one you have to stitch on whatever theme they choose. That's January. It'll probably happen again in January. So I guess I should start showing you my whips, my works in progress. My first one is Inner Depths. And I should have had that off of there first. So Inner Depths is Heaven and Earth design. It's full coverage. It is artwork by Chris Ortega. And it will look like this when it is finished. I started this I didn't write it down not that long ago early August if I remember right and it is stitched on 25 count antique white Lugana by Swigart and here's where it was when you last saw it. And here it is now. And I have been working my way across the top. Trying to fill in the top 10 going across. Typewriter method, that is my preferred 
I am parking somewhat in the row above. For me, because of because of the way I am stitching this, I'm actually holding it on my lap, so I'm working upwards. <laughs> because this is closer to me it's just easier to reach so I mean I'm parking below but when I'm working on it I'm parking in the row above I it makes sense to me that's all that matters I'm doing really good on this I reached my goal from last week to get to the next thousand mark I'm at 6,179 as of this morning and that is 1.77% finished. Still a lot to go. There are empty spaces in there because I don't have those colors. So I will have to eventually place an order. It is very frustrating for me because I have threads in various projects. I have one I have a, a box over here that has all my extra DMCs. I have a cabinet downstairs that has my main DMC storage and I have a floss box that has all of the bobbins of floss pulled for the three Mirabilia's that I'm working on. And then I have, you know, some floss in other projects, but the frustrating part is I'm sure I have this color somewhere, but I've looked everywhere and I don't. It's just frustrating when you think you have all the colors, but no. So, that was Inner Depths. My plan is to... It has been pulled this just today for ABC Ingo on Z for Zweigart. So I will have to put more stitches into it. I will probably put them in the black area here right here it's just dense black stitching I and I'm stitching this half stitch so I should do 200 half stitches to get the goal on the magazine challenge group which will be probably less than an hour so you know it's an hour or 100 stitches so that's where we'll go with that the next project that I have to show you is one that I have wanted to stitch ever since I got the magazine. And the monthly magazine challenge group is, its goal is to get you to pull out the magazines and stitch on those patterns that you've had for forever and work on them. And I have finished a couple that way because of that group. And this one is another one that I've had. And I put off stitching it. This is from the June 1999 Just Cross Stitch magazine. And it is English Garden Welcome by Teresa Lensler. I don't think it's ever been published on uh, as a standalone pattern and it's beautiful. Here's where I was when you last saw it. And here's where it is now. And I am parking but I'm able to manage this okay. So I've I've decided to start working in the border. 
this very large floral border. Basically what I do, I do have a working copy and I just pick a color, work it as far as I can, pick another color, work it as far as I can, and then just keep filling in as I go down. I don't think that my back is, is horrible. <laughs> I travel, I carry the threads across the back. This is not um, a very, it's a very loose fabric, so I would be seeing the threads carried across the back, but the threads are muted colors, so I don't think they're gonna show through heavily. Here's my back. So, I mean, I wouldn't pick a bright pink to go across the back from one flower to the next unless there was stitching to hide it. And then I'd pr probably bury my stitches on the back. But yeah, I have, this is also on my Whipgo board for this month. Whipgo is run by Jessie Marie Does Stuff. Um, make your own bingo board, make your own goals. This one I've been, I was a little crazy and my goals for this year are 22 hours on each project. I haven't sat down and added up the hours on this, but this has been on my ABC Ingo board quite a few times. And this time it only was called once. And that was for T for Teresa Wensler. I think it's still got a couple more days of work from the magazine monthly challenge group. So there's that one. This next one, I love it and I hate it. It's actually not that bad. This is Le Belle Lettre de Gigi T. You can almost see it. Can you see it? The picture is horrible. Even when you go online and look at the um, shop images, I guess. Like if you, when I saw this image on one, two, three stitch, it literally is just a couple of swirls because it just did not photograph well. Um, so I was, you know, looking at the other charts and thought, well, they're gorgeous. So why wouldn't T be gorgeous? So I bought it off faith, on faith and it is gorgeous. Here's where I was when you last saw it. I'm stitching this on 30 five count Edinburgh linen that I dyed myself. I believe that the writ dye that I used was rose quartz. I have not found that dye in my room. Um, there's a bunch of dye somewhere. Um, yeah. So Here's where it's at. So what I worked on was this corner here. And last time I showed it, she was finished. And I believe this may have been started. Now this is the start of another tea. This sampler has got all kinds of fancy teas all throughout it. So see one there. Uh, there's one here. There's one down here. So this is another T being started in the corner. 
And when I started it, I, what did I do? I counted off of, I either counted off of the owl or the girl. Doesn't matter because when I referred to it to the other, one of them is off. And I thought, well, I know the bird, the bird is off. So maybe I counted off of that. The problem ended up being, don't put a pattern away too long between stitching sessions if you know something's wrong. The owl, the owl is the problem. He is one row too short. So I counted off the owl to make the girl and the girl is right but she's a row too high. So this meant anything I count off of this is going to be wrong. So what I did was I stitched off of this. I knew that the beehive was right, the bee was right. So I made this and I made the little puppy, sheep, the sheep, that sheep, and then did this border here, these numbers, and I'm coming up. This is the top corner. It'll come across, and then I will count off of this, and there is enough space between the letter and the bottom border. I will, it will fix itself, and then that corner will be done, and, and I know this row of stitching here is right. As long as that B scap is in the right spot. Um, but I'm pretty sure it is. I, you know, verified, verified all the B's to this. We're good. I'll fudge it if it's not. But, so. The Belle Lettre de Gigi T. I really do like working on this one. This is um, three pages across and two pages high. And I'm about a half of a page all the way across. So that's a quarter finished. Really like working on this one. The fabric is beautiful. The, the color, it's anchor black on Edinburgh linen. Works beautifully. Okay. That one, I got three days worth of work on it. That was for B, G, I put, oh, D, B, D, and G, yep, for Magazine Monthly Challenge. So, that also fits into Sampler September, which I really have not posted anything on Instagram at all. I think what I'm going to do maybe later today is I'll take a picture of all the samplers that I've been working on and do a collage up there. So my next project that Carolyn said that I had to work on is Rose Quaker by Stickadine Don Ver Weichenberg. Um, had to take the pattern off of there. I'll insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like. Where I was last time. And here I am now. 
Not a whole lot more progress. This is being stitched on 32 count messy by Picture This Plus. So this is not with the called for threads either. I am doing a conversion with um well, it was going to be all Victoria Sampler threads, but it's not. This is Leo and Roxy's. This was Victoria Sampler, and this is Weeks Dye Works. And this is another one of those colors where, well, it is the color I'm really frustrated with. Um, number DMC number 632. I need it for inner depths. I need it for this. I need it for stitching shelf. I think I need it for stitching shelf. And it's just, it seems like everything I'm picking up, I need that color. So I need to pick it up. Um, and I've looked at Walmart and they don't have it. The reason I need it for this one, even though I'm doing a color conversion, is because I want to know what I'm supposed to be similar to. So I'm going off of the image. The problem is the image isn't really the image that I have in mind for my conversion. I know that doesn't make any sense, but um, I wanted to add more colors into it, more it's, it is more taupes, rose, reds, pinks, um, but I would actually like to add some yellows and some greens into it. Make it more spring colored. So I know for sure I have to frog this one. And that's another thing. Um, the one strand on this was really good for this color and really good for this color, but the red, the red is not dense enough. I don't know if you can see, but it's I'm not happy with the stitching and it has to be completely ripped out anyways. I ripped out some of it and I thought, oh, that must be enough because I, I thought I found the mistake, fixed it. Then I went on to the brown part here and it was way too close, but this had to be completely ripped out because it belongs further down here. So since I have to rip it out anyways, am I going to change the color? Am I going to use two strands? We'll see. It's a leaf. I feel like the leaves should be green. So we'll see what happens with this. That had one day yeah, for Q, Quaker. So my next, the next thing I'm going to show you, I worked on a little bit and it was called for, I believe it was actually called for the next day. It was like, well, Oh, I remember why I worked on it. I picked it up because I was done. I was done with the Quaker. I did my stitches. I did my hour. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. That's the wrong bag. This I picked up the same night. Usually with this challenge, I am... <clears throat> Hold please. 
squeaky wanted off of her chair. So usually with this challenge, what I do is I pick that project and I just stitch on it that entire evening. But like I said, I did what I had to do on that and was done. So I picked up Dressmaker's Daughter by Mirabilia because it needed to get some attention. It, I believe, did not get the stitches in on it in August at all. And so I'm trying to play a little bit of catch up. Here's where it was when you last saw it. And once again, I have to take the pattern off. And here it is now. And it is looking really good. This is being stitched on 32 count lavender mist. Belfast Linen by Extra Designs. So I worked in the white on here. Some of the darker color and then filled in some white. And then, wouldn't you know it, the next day, you was called. This is on my board for you because there is Umbria colored thread in this pattern. I believe it's used over here in the autumn portion, but I'm working on winter because I'm stitching them in the seasons of the Australian people. It, uh, yeah. So in the summer I'm working on winter and come the 22nd I will be switching over. I actually won't be switching over because the next one to do for me would be spring. I actually should switch over. I have very little left to do on spring. Very little. Um, really, it's just the back stitching. It's, it's just stitching this dress form and then it's finished. And then I think I will come back to winter because it is the farthest behind. So, Dressmaker's Daughter. Next on the list. I have a new start. It is and it isn't a new start. It's part two of a two part project. Part one is finished and it's right here. And it would be the little mouse. From the Just Nan scissor roll and I if you've been with me you know that I was waiting till I finished my Alice in Wonderland so that I could take the piece of fabric off the bottom because I it was a perfect size it's, it's probably even longer than I need but I didn't want to cut up a huge piece of 32 count raw Belfast linen when I have a piece big enough right there. I could have cut it off before but I didn't. So this is a it's a new start but not completely. It's part two. 
and that's where I'm at. I've actually made this my lunchtime project. So I take it to work and I work on it. I've worked on it for two days and that's what I've gotten. I, I mean the first day I worked on it was for the monthly magazine challenge group. Um, I'm sure I took pictures and put it up there. So it will look like this when it's finished. And then it gets rolled up. Sorry for the glare. Yeah. So that was the start of these two panels. Right there. This, uh, was a gift from my son. He kitted it all up for me. Thread it and everything and DMC and I even looked through this to see if I have that color. But I don't. He bought all the fabric and everything so I have this huge piece of Zweigart raw linen that I can use for a larger project. Or more of these scissor rolls. I don't know. I don't have any more. This is the only one that I have. But yeah. So that was for N. Just Nan. So that's all the stitching that I've done. Um, yeah. Plans. Might have you know, turned out to be a nice day. <laughs> but anyways, plans are, I have to get the stitches in on Inner Depths for the monthly magazine challenge group. And then I'm gonna switch out to, I, I'm gonna switch out to um, a stitching shelf. I know I've been, saying that I might switch it out to Hatter. I'm still on the fence about that, but I think I'll get a stitching shelf out, get some more stitches into that, and then back to Inner Depths. I would actually like to see Inner Depths all the way across the top. I would like to see stitching shelf all the way across the top by the end of the year. I think that's that's a manageable goal to reach the edges. I got two months. I got three months, but really only two because you know December is madness. Okay. Um, I also really do need to work on Queen Mariposa by Mirabilia for my other Whip Go project because. I did not put it on my bingo board. So on my M monthly magazine challenge group, ABC Inco, did not make it. So I will have to find time to get 22 hours into Queen Mariposa. Hopefully you'll see it next week. ABC Ingo runs until September 25th. That would be one week from today. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I've been able to keep up so far. I just have to make up for Dressmaker's Daughter and Inner Deaths. Inner Deaths was just called today. So Dressmaker's Daughter. I don't have a single bingo yet. Not a single one. I have so many four here, four there, four here. If I get an S, I'll get a double. It might even be a triple by the time it's called. It might actually be the last number or last letter called.
called. So, yeah. So until next time, I, I, you know what? I don't have any haul. So, yeah. So until next time, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Get some stitching in as much as you can, whenever you can. Happy stitching. Bye.